So there hasn't been an update for a while on the Foxilla for a few reasons. One, we had Christmas. Um, we live in Iowa and it's cold here, so today is like a nice minus 12 day. We haven't brought the car home even from off the line. Today's like a January 20th, but here's a rundown on what we've been doing. Um, we rewired the whole car. So my friend Sam at uh, Justin and Cole's shop, Off the Line Performance, has been doing an awesome job. He went full motorsports crazy on the wiring. It's got more Raychem and Deutsch and Amphenol connectors in it than most aircraft. Um, so something, you, if you watch the dyno video, you'll notice where the car, we kind of stuck up on things, we were checking things out. This is kind of a new motor, blower, intake manifold. We really didn't know what was gonna happen, so we were kind of running out of fuel, we noticed. Um, and, and really to get that next level stuff, we went to that Mtron ECU, and that's what we're wiring in now. Um, just to give you an idea, we also jumped up the injectors. We had uh, 1300 cc per minute injectors and now we have 2600 cc per minute injectors from injector dynamics um, I'll kind of lay out some harnesses so you can kind of see the detail work but we do have like a, a torque knob on the steering wheel now where we have um, a few power settings so as we go to race this car we can actually turn the torque down because we're going to bleed some air with an extra throttle body off of the uh, supercharger now um, there's lots of little cool trick features and uh, Sam's done just an awesome job wiring. So to kind of go through the engine stuff, um, just some basics, it's Ford stock Godzilla block and crankshaft. It's got uh, Cali's rods, Wiseco pistons. It's got Willis Performance Engines cylinder heads with stainless valves. I, I believe it's got pack spring, stock rocker arms. Um, after our first dyno pulls, we actually made some new valve covers with some baffling that we designed. We put these uh, IGN-1A coils on, which are the Mercury Marine heavy duty coils. So when we made our new valve covers, we actually made standoffs for those. Um, it's got the oiling system from Andy Power Products. Um, all this billet stuff on here is actually the first one of this style of front cover. It's got a Powermaster alternator, the OEM Ford water pump, um, power steering, all that stuff under here. It does have a big air to water intercooler that we built our own intake for this engine also. So we're doing some testing. So it's just taking some time. Um, another thing you might notice under here is the AEM um, EGT to can. So, and then we can kind of go underneath the dash and I can point out a few things under there. So inside the car, some changes we've been doing. This is the new Mtron KV8 ECU. They're made in Australia. Um, pretty high end motorsport stuff, not quite normally what we would use. Um, this car is a little radical. We need some data for some testing on things. Also, we changed from the ECU Masters. We had the PMU 16. We put the PMU 16 Auto Sports version in. Um, you know, we have the Blink Marine keypad. This is the tilt and brake bias for front to rear on the uh, brakes, fire system handle, Bowler T56 Magnum, ECU Masters dash. Um, it's got a little vintage air heater so we can have defrost. Um, Tilton drive-by-wire. We've got a brake pressure sensor on there, clutch sensor, um, and Tilton reservoir. Dynamic drive lines, carbon fiber drive shaft. So we're gonna try to get this thing wrapped up here in the next, next few days and then get this thing back on the dyno. Then we can get it to our shop and get the final body work done and uh, get her painted. So there's a lot going on in this car. So we had to rewire everything, which has been a really big undertaking and it's taken a lot of time, but it's exactly because of that. It's, there's a lot to wire in, there's a lot to do because obviously we want to eliminate as many failure points on the car as possible so that we can focus on the things that are on the car that are unknowns. So if we know we can make a wire harness at a spec that we can trust that it's ideally never gonna fail, then we can focus on the engine, we can focus on the supercharger, and we can focus on the driving, which is the main purpose of the car. It's a competition car, so we wanna be able to give the driver ultimate control of the car so that he can put his best foot forward in making the car perform the way that we want it to perform. So because of that, um, 
We have everything sheathed in Raychem DR25 um, using epoxy sealing compound. Um, everything is service looped. Uh, wire is uh, what's commonly known as Tefsel wire or Spec 55. It's a uh, aviation grade wire, uh, extremely resistant to temperature, very good conductivity, small, slim, fits everywhere, bends easily. So it gives us ultimate capacity of routing all the engine harness and all that. So that's what we went with. This is kind of what that looks like. Um, because of the capabilities that we have, having a machine shop as part of the program of the car, um, we designed and created base plates to mount the wiring harness to the firewall. So it's uh, easily disconnectable without taking the harness off of the engine in case that we ever need to take the engine in and out of the car quickly. Um, you just spin this off, take the harness out with the engine together. It all comes out, goes back in easily. So as you can see, this is all heat shrunk. It's all protected, sealed from the environment. All the connectors are Deutsch automotive connectors. They all have a certain level of sealing that a lot of other automotive connectors don't have. They're also available. They're commonly used in motorsport and they're pretty easy to connect and disconnect. Pretty reliable, lots of mating cycles. Um, it's a pretty long harness, as you can see, many branches, many connectors. There's oil pressure sensor, coolant pressure sensor, uh, supercharger inlet pressure sensor, uh, manifold pressure sensor, supercharger temperature. Or a few moments later. Oil temperature, coolant temperature, intake manifold temperature. There's so many sensors on this thing. There's two throttle bodies. Um, one of them we're gonna use, again, for driver control. That second throttle body um, is going to be used as a supercharger bypass. Uh, we consulted this with the supercharger manufacturer and they, would, they said that it would be all right for the supercharger. So the purpose is we're gonna have a throttle body that's gonna bleed off boost so that the driver can select how much power the car will make. So for example, if you don't need 1200 horsepower in an autocross course, you can turn it down to 600 horsepower um, and that would be enough for that autocross course. So we're doing all that. We have a flex fuel sensor in this. So one of the changes that we made was we decided to go with a search tank setup for the fuel system. That will help the uh, weld and pump that's in it work a little bit easier, having a little bit of pressure behind the pickup since it's not gravity fed, it's actually siphoning off of the fuel tank. So now we have a search tank set up in there that kind of pushes fuel through that siphon. So it helps the weld and pump uh, last longer and it also helps it from starving during high G turns. This car with 315 uh, Falcon tires, it's it's probably gonna pull some really high Gs in the turns. So we were kind of concerned that the fuel would slosh around in the tank and we would um, lose a lot of uh, fuel to the pickup. Um, it also is going to consume a lot of fuel using Ignite Red ethanol fuel. Um, so we decided to put a flex fuel sensor in case that we ever need to uh, use gasoline in an emergency in a pinch, we don't have fuel available or we run out or something like that, then we can put 100 octane, turn the power a little bit down and via the flex fuel sensor, the fueling will self adjust. Um, that is all done via the Mtron KV80 CU and via the tune. We have the um, digital dash so the driver can keep uh, track of everything that's going on with the car. Uh, we're gonna have a GPS module inside that digital dash. That's an ECU Master ADU7 dash. Um, that GPS module, where it's gonna allow the driver to kind of keep track of his lap times and the position and the track and all that. This is gonna be a pretty cool addition. Um, everything will be controlled via the PDM and the CWI fan and fuel pump modules, um, which is all can controlled and ECU controlled, so the driver has just a few switches that he will have to mess with and everything else is just get in the car and drive, um, which is what we wanted to do. So we have this kind of custom steering wheel panel uh, that Bob and I made 
and it's got multiple buttons and a rotary knob uh, in the panel. So the buttons, uh, two of these are latching. We're gonna use these as the uh, turn signal buttons since we don't have a turn signal stock and in the truck we have it set up via the CAN bus keypad. Um, we found pretty quickly that it's kind of a hassle to have to reach over, turn that on and turn that off. So we decided to just add it to a steering wheel like you're used to. You're gonna have a push to talk button for the comm system inside the car for the driver to talk to the driving instructor. And um, you're going to have a button here for the horn. You're going to have a push to pass button, which is basically gonna give this thing all the power that it has on a straightaway. And then you have your power knob. Um, this has four settings, so you basically are gonna go from 25, 50, 75 to 100% power. So let's say you wanna set it to has six, eight, thousand and twelve hundred well that's how you do that um it's all going to go to a curly cord which is going to allow you to disconnect the steering wheel unplug a connector take it out of the car put it back in plug it in put the steering wheel on boom everything works this is all going to be connected to the ecu master adu7 dash and that's going to be transmitting over can bus all the states of these buttons to the PDM and the Mtron KV8. So that's another cool feature that we added on this thing. So in the back area here, some things that we did, we changed. We put a radium surge tank in it. So what it basically is, it's a big can in the fuel cell. It's got a little lift pump that pumps fuel into it. The surge tank has some check valves on the bottom. So basically the tank's full of fuel it's got two dash 10 pickups, goes into a little Y adapter, then into a welding uh, filter, and then dash 12 into the welding pump, then dash 10 PTFE out to the engine, and then return back into the tank. Uh, this fuel hose is kind of mocked up for now. We're gonna finish out the sheet metal work once it gets back to my shop. Um, that's kind of the major changes to the car. So that pretty much sums up everything we did to the Fox body, um, all the major changes. Uh, we got to wrap up some wiring, do some body work, paint. Hopefully mid-February we're at uh, Barber doing some testing with the car. And our first ra race is at the Charlotte Roval in, uh, towards the end of March.